Hi guys, it's Miss Ellis. This week we're celebrating mysteries in the library and I've chosen a very special mystery story for you. This one is called The Wednesday Surprise and is written by Eve Bunting. Eve Bunting is one of my very favorite authors. She always tackles um, stories that have to do with social events like homelessness or the military or um, uh, day workers and migrant workers and people that are lost or something like that. So this story is very poignant and I want you to enjoy this story as much as I do. But pay attention because it has a twist in it. And if you don't pay attention to the clues, you won't be able to solve the mystery. It is illustrated by David Kernick. And here we go. Now, if you look on the front cover, there is a grandma and a little girl. And you can tell that they're in an older house with couch and um, a book. Okay, so those are your first clues. Let's go ahead and get started. The Wednesday surprise. Here's another clue. There's a bag. The Wednesday Surprise by Eve Bunting. The bag, there's a cat, more books. So we already know the story is gonna be about books. I like surprises, but the one grandma and I are planning for my dad's birthday is the best surprise of all. We work on it Wednesday nights. On Wednesdays, mom has to stay late at the office and my brother Sam goes to basketball practice at the Y. That's when grandma rides the bus across town to stay with me. I watch for her from the window and I blow on the glass to make breath pictures while I wait. And when I see her, I call, Sam, she's here. And he says it's okay to run down, down the long stairs and to wait by the door. Grandma, I call. She's in a big apartment building, so she's up several floors and she's blowing her breath on the window and fogging it up and then she's drawing a picture on the window and that's a picture of a birthday cake, right? Anna! She's hurrying, her big cloth bag bumping against her legs. We meet and hug and she tells me how much I've grown since last week. And I tell her how much she's grown too, which is our joke. Because us, between us, we carry her lumpy bag upstairs. I show grandma my breath picture if it's still there. Mostly she knows what it is. Mostly she's the only one who does. On Wednesday nights, we have hot dogs. Have you heard from your dad? Grandma asks Sam. He'll be back Saturday, same as always, Sam says, in time for his birthday. His birthday? Grandma raises her eyebrows as if she'd forgotten all about it. Grandma is some actress. When Sam goes, she and I do the dishes and then we get down to business. I sit beside her on the couch and she takes the first picture book from the bag. We read the story together out loud and when we finish one book, we start a second. We read for an hour, get some ice cream, and then we read some more. Grandma gives me another hug only seven years old and smart as paint already. I'm pleased. They're all going to be so surprised on Saturday, I say. Do you know what the surprise is? What do you think they're practicing and what are they planning for? It's a secret. When Sam comes home, we play card games. And when mom comes, she plays too. You'll be here for the birthday dinner, mom asks as grandma is getting ready to leave. Oh yes, the, the birthday, grandma says vaguely, as if she's forgotten again. As if we hadn't been working on our special surprise for weeks and weeks, grandma is tricky. I'll be here, she says. Sam walks grandma to the bus stop. As they're going down the stairs, I hear him say, what have you got in this bag, Grandma? Bricks? That makes me smile. Papa comes home on Saturday morning and we rush at him with our happy birthdays. He has brought Sam a basketball magazine and me a pebble, smooth and speckled as an egg for my rock collection. 
I found it in the desert, close to the truck stop, he says. It was half covered with sand. I hold it, imagining I can still feel the desert sun hot inside it. How long did it lie there? What kind of rock is it? Dad has stopped to pick wildflowers for mom. They're wilting and she runs to put them in the water. Then dad has to go to bed because he's been driving his big truck all through the night. When dad sleeps, Sam and I hang red and blue streamers in the living room. We help mom frost the cake. We've made dad's favorite dinner, pot roast, and our gifts are wrapped and ready. I watch for grandma and help carry the bag upstairs. Wow, Sam should feel how heavy it is now. Grandma has brought a ton of books. We hide the bag behind the couch. I'm sick from being so nervous. What do you think she's nervous about? Do you know what the surprise is? Grandma usually has seconds, but tonight she doesn't. I don't either. I can tell mom is worried about the pot roast, but grandma tells her it's very good. Why do you think they're not having seconds? Do you think maybe they're nervous about something? And they don't want to eat too much? Sometimes it's hard to eat when you're nervous. Are you feeling well, mama? Dad asks grandma. How are your knees? Fine, fine, the knees are fine. Dad blows out the birthday candles and we give him his gifts. Then grandma shoots a glance in my direction and I go for the big bag and I drag it across the table. I settle on the floor between us. Another present? Dad asks. What do you think the present is? Let's see. It's a special surprise for your birthday, Dad, from Grandma and me. My heart is beating awfully fast as I unzip the bag and I give the first book to Grandma. It's called Popcorn. I squeeze Grandma's hand and she stands and she begins to read. Mom, Dad, and Sam are all astonished. Dad jumps up and says, what's this? But Mom sh shushes him and pulls him back down. Grandma has the floor. She finishes popcorn, which takes quite a while, and she gives the book back to me and beams all over her face. What was the surprise? Did the little girl learn to read? The surprise was the little girl taught the grandma how to read. She didn't know. My goodness, mom is beaming too. When did this wonderful thing happen? When did you learn to read? Anna taught me, grandma said. On Wednesday nights, I add. And she took the books home and she practiced. You were always telling me to go to classes, 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 grandma says to dad. And she looks at mom. You must learn to read, you say. So I come to Anna. I giggle because I am so excited. Grandma reads and acts out the Easter pig and the Velveteen Rabbit. It's much smarter if you learn to read when you're young, she tells Sam, Sam sternly. The chance may pass along with years. Sam looks hurt. But I can read, Grandma. Nevertheless, she takes out another book. Are you going to read everything in that bag, Mama? Dad asks her. He's grinning, but his eyes are brimming over with tears. And he and Mom are holding hands across the table. Maybe I will read everything in the world now that I've started, Grandma says in a stuck-up way. I've got time and she winks at me. So, Anna, what do you think? Was it a good surprise? I run to her and she puts her cheek against mine. The best ever, I say. I love that story. I love that you, can, you don't have to be young or old to learn something new. The grandma never knew how to read and the seven-year-old girl was able to teach her just with a little bit of patience and a lot of practice. I bet you could learn something new, and I bet you could teach somebody else something that they don't know with practice and a lot of patience. I'll see you next time.